Well, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another sketchy Saturday video. I've got my iced chai tea. No coffee today. Just switching it up. It's hot. I want something a little bit less dark and bitter. You know, this dark and bitter monster needs something a little bit more refreshing. So we are on the iced chai. Today we are, of course, doing a sketchy Saturday video. I love these. Why I don't do them more frequently? I don't know. Take your pick of reasons. I am constantly working on this, that, and the other. And more often than not, I am not in the mood to whip out the camera while I am working. That's what it comes down to. I work on artwork just about all day long. I do take breaks and such, but I work on things all day and then my phone is dead or I just don't want to set up the camera and the lighting and all of that. So, you know, I just don't film, but that's a problem because these videos are fun and you all enjoy them. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. Have a seat in the front so that we can all judge you accordingly. And what on earth is a sketchy Saturday, girl? If you're new, you don't know. Well, you may not, unless you've seen the videos in the playlist. But Sketchy Saturday is exactly what it sounds like. I whip out my sketchbook and I work on rendering one of the sketches that is in the book. In this particular case, it is a illustration that I created for my Patreon patrons. And we're gonna get a little bit corny today on this one, you guys. We're gonna get a little bit corny because this illustration was inspired by a butterfly. Yes, a beautiful little flutterbutt, although it wasn't little, it was quite a large one. And it wasn't simply because, oh, I saw a flutterbutt fluttering around outside my door. No, if you follow me on Instagram, specifically if you pay attention to my stories, I followed the process of a chrysalis which had formed outside my door. So let's start at the beginning. Let's talk about this little butterfly of mine, okay? So I was outside and I was cleaning my front door area. It's the desert, it gets dusty, you know, it's just not, mm. for a fastidious person such as myself, I can tolerate a certain amount of desert dust but my planters get covered in dust, my door, just everything, and you have to sweep, you have to wash periodically. So I was out there doing my Cinderella business, you know, washing, scrubbing the outside of the doorway, when I noticed a gigantic caterpillar. It was a monarch caterpillar, the big stripy ones. And he was clinging from the door frame of my door. And I'm thinking, bug, you cannot hang out there. First of all, you're going to get power washed off my door because I am—I had a water hose. So I was trying to spray down the area and I grabbed a leaf and I tried to take him down, but he had already made his little silk pad. So you know when you see a chrysalis, they are stuck. They are suspended. So they're stuck from a base which they stick on to something, a branch, a leaf, whatever. And in this instance, he had made his, and it was a male, by the way, when it, when he became a butterfly, it was clear that it was a male. So anyway, he put his little pad of silk on my door jam and thought, nope, this is where I'm staying. I don't care if it's exposed to the elements. I don't care if a bird can easily come by, swoop down and destroy me. He was a rebel, he was, he was living dangerously I suppose because I attempted to remove him. Nope, he wasn't having it. He's like, no bitch, he was wiggly, like literally wiggly at me, like uh-uh, uh-uh. It was a violent wiggle, it was hilarious actually. We were engaged in a little bit of a battle royale, this little caterpillar and I, as I attempted to remove him. So I said, you know what? I even managed to move him a little bit. I scooched him over and was like, no, there's a bush right here, go, go make your little transformative situation in the bush over there. Nope. Well, he crawled right back up and said, nope, I told you, madam, 
this is where I want to be, this is where I'm going to stick, and I will have no more of your sassing. So I said, okay, nature, you're scary. Do what you're going to do then. I don't care. And of course, I stomped inside and was like, if you get eaten by a bird, I don't give a shit. When really inside, I'm thinking, oh my god, if I wake up tomorrow and the cocoon is gone or the chrysalis is gone, I'm going to scream. You know, I became a little overprotective of my little, my little flutter butt. So what ended up happening is, of course, the, you know what, I'm going to grab some Tombow markers. I mean, well, you know, should we try to do straight marker today instead of the water based Tombow markers? Maybe? Nah, I could go for some Tombow markers. I'm always in the mood for Tombows. Oh, I forgot a napkin, though. Oh, wait, there's one right here on the floor. Oh, okay. So, this creature made his chrysalis, and that was that. I have never, ever, 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 ever witnessed a chrysalis being made. Well, to be fair, I didn't even know that that's what the caterpillar was doing. He was hanging upside down. I didn't know if he was going to form a chrysalis. I didn't know what was going on when I saw it hanging upside down because all of this happened in the afternoon. And of course, I didn't think anything of it for the rest of the day, even though I had entered and exited my apartment several times throughout the day, but I did not witness him making the chrysalis. I regret not paying closer attention because I would have loved to see that but that's neither here nor there I didn't see it happening but the next day when I woke up I noticed the little green alien thing god they're so creepy looking because if you've never seen a chrysalis a monarch chrysalis to be specific look them up on Google I'm sure everyone has but just in the event that somebody has not Google them because they're green, they are very distinctive, almost opalescent shade of semi-translucent green. And it's an icy kind of aqua-ish green. But the freaky part is that there is a small pattern where they seal themselves in. It's a dot pattern, little tiny dots. And if you look closely, the dots are gold. They are actual metallic gold dots. And I'm thinking, what in the hell kind of voodoo just occurred? What kind of sorcery occurred on my door last night? It was very bizarre, but exciting because I'd never seen such a thing before. And so I promptly looked it up on the Google how long does it take for a chrysalis to, or for a butterfly to emerge from a chrysalis? Uh, proper chrysalis care, because I do live in the desert and it gets hot. And it was, the temperature at this point had been beginning to creep up to the hundreds. And I thought, oh my God, it's exposed to the elements. It's going to dry up. Something's going to happen. If a bird doesn't swoop in, which I can't control, and eat the thing, then it's going to shrivel up and die in there. It's going to burn up and die, and I'm going to be so sad. Well, every day now, see, I was invested in this goddamn insect, okay? I was invested. Every morning, I would mist it with a mister. I have a little plant mister. I would give it a couple little of mist every morning to make sure it was nice and moist and comfortable. And in the evenings, I would give it another little mist. And it was a whole 10-day thing. The crazy thing is that on the dot, it, ha well, it hatched. It emerged from its chrysalis exactly on the 10-day mark and exactly at the hour that all of the websites said that it would occur. Early morning, before noon, probably after 6 a.m., between 6 and noon. So right around 9 o'clock, right? That's exactly when it happened. But the night before, the night before, the chrysalis became completely translucent or transparent. And I could see the little butterfly in there, fully formed. And I was so excited the night before. Because every day it was kind of like, oh my god, I don't know if you're dead in there. 
10 days is not very long, but when you are hoping that something doesn't shrivel up and die on your door, you're thinking, please, please, please make it, little guy. Please make it. And so the night before, I saw him in there fully formed and adorable. And I thought, oh, tomorrow's the day. He's going to come out tomorrow. And sure enough, the next day, he was sitting there. All big, glamorous, fabulous, beautiful, and gigantic. Huge monarch. I took video. Everyone on Instagram, if you've watched my stories, you saw it. I should insert a couple clips here. If I don't forget when I put this up, when I upload this video, I will share it. But the entire 10-day experience, this, the reason I'm even telling you all of this, because, of course, that little monarch was the inspiration for this page and I allowed myself to have a little cutesy boopsy spiritual woo woo moment throughout the process well several moments the entire 10 day was a cutesy bootsy spiritual woo woo experience for me because you know that I have been experiencing a growth period, quite a life-changing period of transformation for myself. I am leaving an old life behind to start a new one. I am further exploring my passions. I am basically turning my life into a celebration of myself. I am cutting ties to the limiting beliefs that I've had forever, you know, the I'm not good enough to branch out on my own. Uh, for my own good, I need to continue relying on other people to give me a paycheck and to give me security. And while I was dreaming up all of these ideas, that little butterfly decided to stubbornly <clears throat> make his chrysalis on my door and whether or not this is true or not whether or not you believe or not it doesn't really matter because I don't know what I believe in in terms of higher powers and spiritual beings and all of that but I'm an artist I'm a daydreamer I enjoy the fantasy of it all so in my brain I'm thinking oh, okay universe I got you I see what you're doing, girl. You are planting the seed in my brain to say, Carla, be this butterfly. <laughs> be this butterfly. You're stubborn just like he was. You were attempting to move him to get him down off of his little perch, and he said, no, bitch. I'm doing what I want. I know it's risky. I know I'm exposed. I know I could get eaten by a bird or whatever other kind of creature is out in this desert because we've got all sorts of scary ass things out here. But he said, I don't care. I don't care. This is what I want. This is what's making me happy. And this is what I'm going to do. And you are not going to tell me what to do, woman. So just continue cleaning the door, do your thing, and just shoo. Give me 10 days. And I will be beautiful. All right. Okay, butterfly. Be your brave self. Do your thing. And sure enough, it took a lot of work for that little butterfly to transform, or for that giant caterpillar to transform into that little skinny, svelte, fabulous butterfly. Because a caterpillar, they're portly little things. They're little thickums. Thick caterpillar to then shed his skin and transform into this gigantic, well, the wings are gigantic, but his figure, oh, his figure was snatched, very skinny, slender-legged butterfly, from a portly little caterpillar to a svelte supermodel of a butterfly. I told you we were getting corny today. I want to be that butterfly. <laughs> I'm going to be that butterfly, is what I should say. Every month, 
I create Patreon exclusive coloring pages for my Patreon patrons at the Color Fiend tier. I have two tiers. One of them is just a few bucks if you want to support me and be hands off. You just join at that tier and I do open that tier up to suggestions for videos and such. But some people don't care. Some people just want to support an artist and be on their way and they don't care about participating in polls and such. But I have that tier and then I have the Color Fiend tier. And the Color Fiends are the ones who receive coloring pages and coloring related goodies and such. So monthly I create pages as I said and this was the inspiration for the month of May. So my color fiends, if I have any color fiends watching this video, you have this page downloaded. If you forgot to download it, of course, just let me know and I will be happy to email it to you. But that's the story of the butterfly and how I like to believe that I'm on my way to becoming the butterfly I was always meant to be. Cornball. <laughs> Told you we were getting corny today. But I'm not afraid to be corny because that's how I was feeling at the time. And this is what came of it. And she's cute, isn't she? Let me know in the comments if you have ever been graced with a chrysalis, a monarch chrysalis in particular. It was quite a magical experience, I must say, because again, this is something that as a kid, we're all fascinated by. Ooh, butterflies and chrysalis and how do they do that and what is, what, what, what is this natural magic? And as an adult, at just the right time, when I needed to see and witness the process is when it occurred. Isn't that bonkers? I was able to experience this through the eyes of that child who is fascinated by everything. I've never stopped being that child. I mean, <sighs> that child clearly has never left because as an adult, I spend my entire time chasing escapism and creating escapism for others through my coloring books, right? So it never left. But it is still suppressed. It is still suppressed because I'm an adult now, unfortunately, and with that comes responsibilities and adult BS that must take precedent, unfortunately, as much as it pains me to say it. But it is moments like that which almost force me to stop being an adult and remember what matters to me most which is imagination, creativity, magic, and just being obsessed and enthralled by what's around me without needing any stimuli. I, you guys know I'm not especially social. I am selectively social. If I'm in the mood to go out, I'm going to go out and have fun. But I have to be in the mood for it. If not, it is utterly draining. I enjoy being alone. But I typically create my own magic when I'm by myself. So having it be created externally and just allowing me to experience it without my having to extend myself, without my having to use any of my energy to create the magic was a unique experience because I you know when you go to a concert you're just a spectator all of the magic is occurring on stage so you just get to enjoy it my entire life I'm the one I'm the performer and the audience but in instances like this little butterfly when I had so much swirling in my brain already about 
I'm not happy with my job. I'm not entirely happy with my life. What do I do? Do I leave? Do I do I do my own thing? I'm I'm scared. I'm stuck. I'm confused. I don't I don't know what to do. And in this instance, I became the spectator. And in so doing, I was able to dream up an entirely new life path for myself. And no, maybe the butterfly wasn't responsible for these stirrings that had been occurring in my brain already, but it certainly helped. It helped to solidify those ideas and to remind me in an abstract way, girl, just keep going. Just keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Because there's magic out there for you. And just like this butterfly created it for himself, that's what I got to do. And that is exactly what I am currently doing. Oh, the warm and fuzzies, right? But it's the truth. Listen, I'm not afraid to be corny. Because it's the truth. And to tie it all into the sketchbook here, <laughs> creating is a type of magic. And this is why I tell people not to overthink their coloring, not to overthink their sketchbook either. Open it up, just crack it open. I would encourage that you do it today, even just for 15, 20 minutes. And before anybody tells me, oh, I don't have 15 minutes, yes, you do. Everybody has 15 minutes a day. Every single person on this planet. Well, no, let me take that back. Let me take that back. Let me take that back. Just about everyone in the Western world has 10 minutes to spare. And now, before anybody attacks me for saying that, well, what if somebody is, you know, struggling with mental illness, homelessness, and all that? You guys, just stop. Stop with that, with those silly arguments. I'm speaking generally for the people who are watching my videos. Chances are you have 10 minutes to serve because I'm tired of excuses. I, one thing I cannot stand are people who swim in their own excuses, right? If you have enough time to feed yourself, I don't care if it's a bag of Doritos. I don't care if it's a fun size Snickers bar. If you have time to do that, you have time to whip out a sketchbook because I get this argument a lot where people say, Ugh, I wish I could, I wish I could, I wish I could, I wish I could sketch more, I wish I could do this, I wish I could improve this skill, I wish, I... no, you can, the reason that you don't is because you do not want to. And don't argue with me, because unless you're sitting in a pile of your own filth, unshowered for a month, without having brushed your hair, brushed your teeth, or done anything like that, then you do have the time. If you have time to shower and brush your teeth, and eat a freaking candy bar. Shut up. You have the 10 minutes. You understand what I'm saying? I can't stand excuses. I can't stand excuses. If you are alive today, you can do something with yourself. Mm, Dishing a little bit of corniness and tough love for you today, huh? But it's what I do. It's what I do. I did not grow up in a privileged situation. Was not born with a silver spoon. Just nothing like that. Everything I've ever done and earned, I've done it myself. And that's why I have very little sympathy for people with excuses. And I see people who have lives who are exponentially more difficult than mine, and they have achieved far more than I ever will. So I have zero ex or I have zero tolerance for excuses. So having said that, please do yourself a favor. Be a butterfly today. <laughs> Go grab a sketchbook. If you don't have a sketchbook, grab a scrap of paper and just make something in it. Doesn't matter if it's something beautiful or not. It doesn't have to be. Just open it and make something. That's it. All right, so I didn't intend for this video to become a little <laughs> a tough love, spiritual pep talk, whatever the hell this was today. 
So what can we talk about now? I don't know. What else am I in the mood to talk about? I haven't been doing a whole lot. The desert is up in the triple digits now. So I do not leave my apartment before sundown. True story. I just can't do it. Your girl can't do it. And if you are thinking, if you hate the heat so much, why do you live in the desert? No, I actually do not hate the heat. I love the heat. I thrive in the heat. Especially desert heat because it's, is it, but, 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 cannot speak. Because it is dry heat. Oh, I live for it. I dig it. The issue is the sweat. <laughs> Two issues, actually. So issue number one being it's a psychological thing. If I feel the sunlight, summer, late spring, and early summer sun on my skin, psychologically, I feel as though I'm burning more than regular sunlight throughout the rest of the year. And scientifically, it's actually technically true because the UV index is significantly higher. Ergo, you are burning more. But the heat paired with the skin sizzle, it does things to my vampire brain that I don't enjoy. It scares me. So that's the sun on my skin that I don't like, burning flesh. And compound that with sweat. I don't mind sweat when someone is on an air-conditioned dance floor. It's, I consider that clean sweat. You're on a dance floor, it's air-conditioned, you're good, you don't have to worry about it. Exercise sweat, which is gross sweat, but it's okay, because it's healthy sweat. Um, walking outside of my car to Target when it's 115 degrees and sweating, that's not pleasant sweat for me. You see the difference? If I am sweating in my polyester clothing, which I know, don't wear so much polyester in the summer then. Girl, save it for the cooler months. I know. But you all, I live in the desert. <laughs> cooler months are, what, six months out of the year? It's literally half the year is unlivable for my wardrobe. And that's why. I don't like to be sweaty when I'm supposed to be running errands. When I'm living my normal life, when I'm not exercising, when I'm not dancing in air conditioning, when it's heat, sweat, errand running, nope, hate it, can't do it, disgusts me, I disgust myself, nope, hate it. And that is why, <clears throat> that is why the heat is a problem. But during the day when I can just stay locked up in my bat cave, it's fine. Because at night, at night I can put on cute little outfit, cute little rompers, cute little hot pants, cute little something. Grab my slushy beverage. Sometimes it's non-alcoholic. Most of the time it's non-alcoholic, but sometimes I have a little slushy icy pina colada or mojito or something. And I go for my long night walks through Palm Springs. The quiet, the blessedly quiet streets of Palm Springs at night. Warm, balmy, my mind can just wander because there is not a single human being on the street to disturb me. It's gorgeous. It's worth the trauma of the 120 degrees. Oh my God, I'm trapped in my, in my vampire cave life. It's absolutely worth it. So how many of you out there are screaming right now? Screaming bloody murder. Oh, this girl has lost her mind. She's insane. How can she love the heat? I know. I know people like that in my life who think I'm an absolute nutter. 
But hey, you know, I think people who enjoy living where it snows are absolute lunatics. I enjoy looking at the snow, but to live in it, to ask me to dress for snowy weather, are you out of your mind? You out of your mind. You want me to wear a parka? You want me to wear earmuffs? What about my hot pants? What about my giant obnoxious earrings? I can't wear a friggin' parka and earmuffs and mittens. What about these? What about these? I can't do mittens with these. No, oh, see, that is hellish for me. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Let me know where you guys live. Do you love it or hate it? If you live somewhere where it is hot, ungodly hot. If you live in a desert and you hate it, let me know. Likewise, if you live somewhere where it snows and you hate it, let me know. And on the flip, if you live where it snows and you love it, let me know. If you live in the desert and you love it, let me know. I moved here by choice. There's a, it's a special kind of animal that enjoys the desert especially outside of metropolitan areas because the desert is a wild and deadly place when you start to think about it. It's truly scary. <clears throat> but I'm a romantic. That's why I love it. Then you get beautiful moments such as Mr. Fancy Butterfly over here who can thrive in a harsh environment. And, oh, he... Mm, <clears throat> a truly brave soul. Because he said, uh-uh, I want to build my chrysalis right here for the whole world to see in your door jam or your door frame exposed, exposed to the elements. There's a little bit of shade there, though, to be fair. <clears throat> it's not as though he was toasting during the day. He's definitely, he was definitely shaded, but there were no leaves, no branches, nothing protecting him. That little butterfly has no idea the core memory that it formed for me. And monarch butterflies are, while not uncommon, they do flutter about out here in the desert. They are fairly rare. We have the common little white and yellow butterflies, but monarchs, not so much. Big, beautiful monarch butterflies. So he was a rarity. It was a rarity to see that and not only that, but I've seen a butterfly, a big monarch butterfly flying around my place. <laughs> and the little romantic in me likes to think, I wonder if that was my flutter butt. I wonder if he's made a home in one of the bushes around here somewhere because I've seen it several times since. And I know that their lifespan is not very long, unfortunately. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I'm hoping it's him. Oh, We got all cute today, didn't we? Got a little of everything. Got a little of tough love. A little pep talk session. We did it all today. <laughs> we did it all. I am unsure at this point how long I have been working on this. I mean, it hasn't been long, of course, but I'm not sure how long it's been. But I want to keep these sketchy Saturdays to 45 minutes to an hour. I try, That seems to be a doable amount of time for me. They could go a little over an hour. That's fine. But generally speaking, I don't want them to be too short and I don't want them to be too drawn out because practicing what I preach, I don't want to spend too long on something in a sketchbook because I'm always telling you, don't make your sketchbooks too precious. Don't treat them as a precious relic. They are simply a repository of your thoughts. They're a therapy session. They're everything. They're supposed to be fun and I don't treat mine preciously. 
I don't use mine to create masterpieces. And so I want to keep these videos not brisk necessarily, but doable. If you would like to listen to my blah 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 while you sit down for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour sketchbook session, great. I would love for you to do that with my videos. And that's why I'm trying to make them a palatable amount of time. She's cute. I love tombow markers. <clears throat> Excuse me for the constant throat clearing, but it is dry. Dry, 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 dry. And I don't have my humidifier on, which apparently you really, really need in the desert. <laughs> Shriveling up like a little old hag. little old hag that I am. No, uh, but I'm a pretty witch. No, I'm not a witch. And by the way, nothing against my witchy folks out there. I know I've got a couple of you. I'm just not, I can't be bothered with religion. <laughs> you think I like structure? No. But hey, all to all of my witchy folks out there, Send me all the witchy good vibes. Do all of that good stuff, because I appreciate it. I do. I poo-poo none of it. Send it all to me. Can't hurt, right? Some good old witchy love. If you are, let me know. I know, I, I don't want to call anyone out by name, but I know of at least two of you out there are practicing with witchy ladies. But if anyone else out there is and isn't shy, let me know down below. It's fascinating to me actually. And I mean truly practicing, not somebody who just, oh, I identify as a witch and you have a couple pentacles in your kitchen. No, no, I mean who actually the rituals, the holidays, all of that. Let me know. It's fascinating to me. I think it's beautiful. It's just, again, it's just not for me. What are we going to do about her outfit? What her little, her blouse, her top, her whatever. Should we just keep it basic black? Yeah, I may regret this, but that's okay. As I said, it's just a sketchbook. Don't make it too precious. She's very cute, though. I am taken with this illustration. There are a few tweaks I would like to make to it. But how about making it a sticker? Hmm. What do you think? Not in the state that she's in. I'm going to color her digitally. Change a few things here and there. I think she'd be cute as a sticker. Now that I'm getting back into my creative groove, which, God, it blew my mind when I sat down and thought about it and realized, girl, you have been off. You have been off for a year, an entire year. I've not been feeling right. I tried to lie to myself and tell me, no, it's not true, I haven't been that bad. No, it's been bad. Very bad. And I'll admit that. Because now I'm seeing the light finally at the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel. Now it's a long tunnel. Oh, it is a long and winding tunnel. But I'm seeing it. <laughs> so that's good.
I think I'm going to I'm gonna say I'm gonna stop this session but now I'm catching myself wanting to do this that and the other I'm hungry is what it is so I do need to eat and I will But uh, I'm going to, what am I going to do with her lips? <laughs> Little sneezes there, excuse me. What am I going to do with her lips? I think I will do her lips on camera, then I'm going to take off eat, get on with my day, let this dry a little bit. Um, it's drying up pretty good today though because of the heat. The inferno that is today. But I will finish some of it off camera and then I will catch up with you all later. If you have not watched any of my sketchy Saturday videos or any of my illustration videos in which I use these supplies, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I'm using. The links to the supplies will always be down below. None of these supplies are Amazon exclusive. Buy them wherever you'd like. Amazon is linked for your convenience. If you are an Amazon shopper, if you're not, that's fine. Go shop somewhere else. But the sketchbook I'm using is the Ohuhu Marker Sketchbook, specifically the marker sketchbook that has the thick, smooth finish paper. I will tell you, not designed for water media. Watercolor, water markers, water base markers, no water media. So technically I'm doing what I'm not supposed to do. So if you are hoping for watercolor results on a marker paper, baby, you're not going to get it. And don't yell at me because I'm the one who does things incorrectly. That's just what I do. But I am using water-soluble markers on water paper, and I am using them as watercolor. It's essentially what I'm doing. Will I go through with some actual watercolor later? Uh, I don't know on this particular piece, but the bulk of it will be water-based markers, ink, microns, and these trash, 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 trash. I hate these. Don't buy them. I don't recommend them. I won't even tell you what they are. They've been discontinued, though, I believe, so you can't get them anyway. No, I'm sure my supplier has discontinued them, the place I used to purchase them from, but they're trash. But as long as it is a waterproof pigment ink, that's all I'm going to be using. The lips, the lips, girl, the lips. Pink, red, orange, black. Why is it such a struggle? We'll just have to save the lips. Usually I don't save the, the lips until the end, but I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do with those lips, little lady. We'll figure it out. But for now, it is time for me to go. I need some food. You don't want me hangry on camera. So I will do a little bit off camera and I will check back in with you later. Welcome back, welcome back. She has returned. It is another day, another manicure. And before I start with the blah, blah, blahs today, if you hear, well, if the volume in this video sounds a bit muffled, it is because I have attempted, or rather in this portion of the video, if it sounds a little off, it's because I have attempted to edit out or at the very least reduce the sound of my air conditioner. I have, I live in an old building and on top of that old building with an old AC, it's fairly loud. So you can definitely hear it in the video. 
So I'm going to try to edit it out, but if you do hear it, you aren't losing your mind. It's my AC. Unfortunately, that is going to be the situation during the summer when I film videos during the daytime. So just allow me a little bit of air conditioning grace, please, until the autumn months. If you really can't stand the sound of the air conditioning, okay, fine. Don't watch any of my videos, and I will see you in the fall when I don't have to use it anymore. But it's going to be a while, so I'll see you then. But for the rest of you, thank you for sticking it out with me, your favorite artsy desert spook, me and my old apartment with my old AC. Thank you. We appreciate the patience. Oh, we are going to, I want to say we're going to be able to finish the sketch up on video today, although I think we have already crept beyond the half an hour mark, so I am going to not rush the completion process, but I am not going to finish it all on camera. So I will go ahead and chit chat for just a few more minutes. I'm going to finish the hat, the butterflies in the outfit, and then all of the face and the hair I will do off camera. How's that? I think that's, that's a good deal. That makes sense to me. So we'll do that and then we will reconvene at the end. I don't know. It has been a couple of days since I sat down to start filming this. And now I can't remember what it was that we were talking about during the last video. So, since the last time I hung out with you guys, has anything exciting happened? No. I've been out to the tiki bar a few times doing my tiki thing. I have been working on my new brand, and that's just about it. I have been getting myself back into work mode without knowing if I mentioned it in the first part of this video or not, but I am slowly, I think I did because I talked about the butterfly, right? The whole inspiration for this page was the butterfly. So, you know, you know that I've been a little off and since the previous session that I sat down to work on this, I have just been working diligently to get myself back up to the productivity levels that I had a couple of years ago. Am I there yet? No. Do I still have a long way to go? Yes. However, things are moving along. Last night, this is exciting for those of you who are interested in my coloring books, whether you color in them or you are just interested in the fact that I make coloring books. Last night, I completed the cover for my next coloring book. I almost let the title slip. I posted a sneak peek on my Patreon for my Patreon patrons to see the cover. Just like the sneakiest, peekiest of peeks. You really don't see anything in the preview with the exception of an eye and some eyeliner. But uh, my patrons seem to be excited, which is a good sign. Of course, they know absolutely nothing that's going on with the book, so when it comes out, they may not even enjoy it. But all of that to say that last night I finished the cover completely. So I had a vision for the cover and this is interesting because now this is not unique to me. I know that artists, you know, through the ages have dealt with this kind of thing. But I had a vision for the cover of what I wanted to achieve and I sat down and I spent a couple of hours working out that vision and it did not feel right. It didn't feel right. It didn't look right. And so I started over and that second round of artwork, much different than the route that I was planning on taking, a much different look, dare I say a more minimal look because it, it is, but it felt much more correct, much more in line with the theme of the book, which is just cuckoo to me. But I'm saying this because in the context of a sketchbook, there are people who attack their sketchbooks in a clinical manner. And what I mean by that is that people will sit down to work on a sketch, but they will come at it with a game plan. They will say, this is rough draft number one, this is rough draft number two, this is the list of the supplies that I want to use and I'm going to spend an exponential amount of time perfecting this sketch. And yet in the end, Either they never get around to finishing it because it is never quote unquote good enough, 
or they spend so much time on it that they become disillusioned with it, they become sick of it, and they just leave it, and they just give up on it. They think, oh, I wasted my time on this, it's not even worth finishing, blah, blah, blah. But as is the case with my coloring book covers in some cases, you need to trust the process. And I know that's frustrating to say and to hear, but wasting, wasting, I use the term wasting loosely, wasting those two hours coloring the cover for my coloring book were the catalyst to my just throwing it away and landing on something that immediately felt correct. So I don't consider anything wasted. If you create artwork and it looks like junk and you feel like, oh, damn it, I wasted my entire day working on this crap. It is hideous. Ugh, I'm not a good artist. Ugh, I'm never going to work again. Ugh, woe is me, hand to the forehead, right? I have done that many, many, many times. Does it piss me off every single time I waste eight hours of my day working on paintings, working on watercolors, working on whatever it is, only for me to hate it at the end of the day? Yes, of course, I absolutely hate it. And I'm kicking myself for having wasted my time. But I will say that in each of those situations, I always learn something, whether it is something technical in terms of the supplies that I'm using, or whether or not it's just learning something about my process, or learning about what I need to not do moving forward. I always learn something, whether it's creative or not, and that's why there's no such thing as wasted time. Now, wasted time is sitting on your ass with a tub of ice cream and a bag of chips. And that is a waste of time in front of the TV because here's the thing, if you are a food artist and you illustrate ice cream and chips all day, okay, fine, that is considered research, honey, it's research, okay? But if you are wasting away in front of the TV, on your Instagram, gossiping, doing whatever, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's wasted time, that's not rest, that is wasted time. And you will not, you will not argue with me and win on that. Is rest necessary? Of course, of course, says the person who has no idea what rest is. But I do allow and seek out some modicum of, of uh, rest in my life. I am, I am not a resting type person. And what I mean by that is I can allow myself a break to go out on a walk. I can allow myself a break to grab, a, on the topic of ice cream, grab a bowl of ice cream, chill out for a minute, and look at the bats. <laughs> I have bats outside in the evenings. I can hang out with the bats for a few minutes and have my ice cream and hang out. And I, I allow myself those moments but they are not necessarily idle moments because I am, and, and perhaps, to be fair, this is perhaps my brain, okay? Because I have what I consider to be active resting periods. And what that means, to me anyway, is that I can scoop myself a bowl of ice cream, go outside in the evenings, watch my little bat friends emerge from the palm trees. The bats, oh my gosh, the palm trees are like little bat apartments out here. Oh, it is so cute. But I digress. If you follow me on Instagram, you've likely seen my fuzzy video of bats at night emerging from the palm trees. But while I'm watching the bats, I can't control what my brain does. And just by watching the bats, I can be inspired to create a new illustration or an idea for a new coloring book can pop into my brain. Things like that. So I don't like to focus on, say, a movie, a television show, or text messages, or anything like that. I just allow myself to experience the moment and to allow my brain to do what it's going to do in those quiet, peaceful moments. 
So when I mean relaxation for me, I mean non-distraction, non-distraction from other human beings. I can be out in nature, I can be for a walk in the city. I mean, it's a small city to be fair, it's a quiet city. But I am alone with myself and with a peaceful environment, not being distracted by movies, by text messages, by, like I said, TV shows or social media and all of that. Now, I love my social media. You know that. I'm on it all the time. But that's part of my work day. When it's time for quiet time, when it's time to chill out with my bats, there is no social media. So, take that as encouragement to uh, enjoy your idle time, but use your idle time wisely. Do not waste your idle time watching a TV show, dreaming of what you coulda, shoulda, or woulda, shoulda, coulda been doing, which is picking up a sketchbook or whatever other activity it is that you enjoy. But because I'm sketching, I'm talking specifically to artists here. Or aspiring artists don't waste your time use that time to create because even if you waste your time it's not really being wasted wasted time is everything else that I mentioned <clears throat> A little dose of encouragement for you sometimes my videos end up being that way which is fine and I have a feeling that this sketchy Saturday might be over an hour. It takes me much longer to complete an illustration when I'm talking. So uh, yay for that if you are interested in longer videos. Well, this one's going to be, I think, significantly longer than 45 minutes. I don't know. Again, it's all up to editing. We shall see later. But I try to not spend too much time editing my videos either because <sighs> why? Why? And of course, wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know? that as I'm sitting here working on this, an idea popped into my head for something that I may potentially want to explore down the road when, this is a while, this is when the sketchbook is complete. Hmm, it might be a good idea, might not. Uh, no, I'm not going to make a sketchbook zine. I know those are quite popular, at least they were several years ago, when people compile their favorite pages from their sketchbook and they release a zine of it. I definitely don't have the time or the money to put something like that together. I have too many things going on and, you, you know, you know my life. I'm busy, it's just me, I have a lot of things going on. A lot of adulting, a lot of bills, a lot of, you know, it's a lot. So putting together a zine is not something that I can do at the moment. And to be honest, I'm not really, I'm not really keen on the idea for myself personally. But I've come up with something else that might be, might be fun. It would require my sketchbook being complete though. So there's a little teaser. I know you're probably annoyed like, oh, just spit it out and say it. No. I keep many of my ideas private until they are ready to be unleashed onto the world for privacy reasons and just for, I don't know, I just, I feel that as a creator in 2022, right, in the modern age, let me sound like a, like an ancient here, but a lot of things that we create, we put into the public eye, which is great. As I said, I love my social media. I love sharing with you guys. I love the feedback. I love inspiring you. I love all those things. But we all live 
online and it is important to keep some things sacred. I keep my private life off the internet, of course, but when it comes to my artwork, I, as much as I share most of my artwork with the public, some of my idea, well, most of my ideas and some of my working processes, I enjoy keeping close to me. my little secret private universe just for myself that makes everything feel so much more genuine and special and thoughtful an antiquated way of thinking maybe but I know other people out there agree with me because you get it you get it my coloring book process, for instance, I used to share it. And even though I loved sharing it, and as much as I hate not being able to share it now, in a way, it's actually nice for me to keep it private. But damn it, I do wish I could share the pages. At least sharing on Patreon, I can share a little bit. But even still, I have a little bit of hesitation to do so because I know how people can be and like I said none of the problematic people that I, I have mentioned previously are currently on my patreon but I can't control who comes in and out I never know what their intentions are um, let's go ahead and do some oh my gosh these damn pens are the worst you've heard me gripe about these if you've watched my videos in the past these blue pens by zig they are their version of a micron pen long discontinued for good reason because they are crap but let me tell you because i'm an artist okay on a budget and i use a lot of supply i go through so many supplies okay my art supply expenses are tremendous probably as much as keeping a child alive right like this is my baby my art supplies are my babies I go through so many art supplies that and inking pens in particular, I go through a ton of them. When I found these pens on clearance, I swooped in like the harpy that I am. Move, bitches, get out the way. I'm buying all the pens. I purchased boxes of them. And I was the happiest chick in the world because I had tested out a few of them. I had purchased a couple to test out and they seemed to do the job. So I thought I was being wise and I said, okay, these are getting the job done. They are on clearance. I'm swooping in. Well, your girl swooped in, purchased tons of these pens only to realize that they dry up very quickly and the pen nib is awful. It wears down extremely quickly. So while the, the two testers that I had purchased were still fresh, I was all excited about having found a honey pot of inking pens. I thought, oh, hallelujah, the angels are singing. Yeah, and then I realized quickly thereafter how unfortunate the pens were. Oh, they're starting to dry out. Uh oh, I just got them though what's happening so being me I'm not going to throw away art supplies you know I don't do that I use them all up now there have been instances where I have thrown a couple of things away because either I knew damn well I was never going to use it again or because it had run its course and it just wasn't up to snuff anymore in terms of quality the paint was starting to dry and become difficult to work with, you know, that sort of thing. That's when I throw art supplies away. So I have been on a mission for literal years to use up all of these pens and I'm finally beginning to run out. But the reality is starting to hit me that, oh God, as much as I despise them, as much as I want to get rid of them, I'm going to have to return to paying micron prices for pens microns are so expensive now i realize that some people do not care for microns i love micron pens and this is what i'm going to tell people 
If you despise micron pens, think about where it is that you're purchasing them. Because I would venture to guess that if you are purchasing your art supplies on Amazon, your and you are not being careful, if you are not doing your due diligence about where you are purchasing or who you are purchasing from on, on Amazon, there's a good chance you could be purchasing a 10 year old micron pen that's been sitting around in a warehouse in the heat, in the ice, etc., being slowly destroyed over the years. Buying art supplies on Amazon is not bad, but you just have to be sure that you are purchasing from a reputable source, not just some random individual who's selling art supplies because they do have that on Amazon. So just be a little discerning about where you are purchasing your supplies and you should be fine. Because I have people who tell me, oh, I hate microns, they've never worked for me. And I'm thinking, well, how is that even possible? This is the industry standard inking pen. It is top notch. Copics, the Copic multiliners are obviously incredible as well, but those are more expensive. So I'm talking about just not the highest end, but the most popular middle range of inking pen is the Micron. I've been using Micron since I was in high school. All of my art classes, all of my illustration classes, all of my illustration work has been done in Micron pens. If you can find these, the Marvi Uchida, they're the ones who make jelly rolls, right? Marvi Uchida, soccer, I'm not sure, I believe so, but these, I would say, are about as good as a Micron. They're a little cheaper, but just these. Okay, my darlings, our little flutterbutt, monarch, pink-haired, sparkly, cat eyeliner, gold, little scully deliciousness is all complete. That is going to do it for this episode of Sketchy Saturday. Thank you for joining me. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you were doing while you were watching and or listening. Are you cleaning? Are you preparing dinner? Are you sketching along in a sketchbook? Let me know. Let me know down below. For those of you who are Patreon patrons and who were patrons during the month that this page was released, enjoy. You have her ready to download, so feel free to color her. Don't forget to tag me if you decide to share it on social media so that I can add you to my Patreon highlights tab on my Instagram. That is it. I'm taking off. Take a look down below. Everything you need to know will be down below as usual. Be bad. Be good give a damn which just come back in one piece i will see you in the next one